Have you got any power-ups in your pocket? No. Okay, no power-ups. Told you, you get nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous, but I don't know why. <laughs> Iron distance athletes and endurance athletes, skills that they have is this incredible ability to be very resilient across not just training, obviously, but every part of their life. My maths teacher used to kind of, uh, I think when she realised I was competitive, she used to sit me next to a really clever guy in the class and would be like, OK, see if you can finish your sums before him. Yeah, I, I definitely was competitive. Talk to me about Emma Power. <laughs> Emma and I have been racing against each other for a number of years. Pow pow. <laughs> Lately, I think I've seen with Emma is that she's matured as an athlete a lot. I've noticed in maybe the last two years. When Emma's hot, she is absolutely on it. Massive engine, very much a weapon. <laughs> Definitely a highly ranked athlete for the future, for sure. How would you describe Sarah Crowley as an athlete? <laughs> Sarah, I've got so many words for Sarah. Sarah is a feisty but a fun athlete. I think she knows when to switch on and switch off. That also gives you longevity in your career, I think. She kind of reminds me a little bit of me because she's just a tough nut. She's just a hard ass that won't give up. I just love her grittiness. Confidence, personal confidence, once you have it, it's, it's yours. It's not what other people think doesn't matter anymore, but when you've lost that, it does feel like everyone's just punching you in the face. I think I started questioning things that I wouldn't normally question. Sarah was ranked third in the world, I believe, in 2020, uh, off the back of like those previous two years' success. And then uh, during the COVID uh, 18 months, two years, Sarah's uh, ranking has dropped well below what we were used to. I don't think you can ever underestimate someone that is willing to work hard, that is willing to sacrifice, and that is willing to take it on the chin when things aren't going your way and life is tough. I'm a fair weather trainer. I do not like to ride outside in the rain. To find a flat bit of road longer than 2K, especially here in Johannesburg, is actually quite tough. So I'll use Zwift to get my sessions done. Also, the really hard sessions, especially like sprint sessions, I prefer to do on Zwift. Being able to hold a set position and set watts for an extended period of time, you just push yourself that much more. Like you don't have to worry about anything else, it's just pure power to the pedals. And I think physiologically, that is always going to make you a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. I know that I'm probably about two or three rides away from going up another level, I think. I see that little orange bar just getting a little bit further. I also think it's nice from the social point of view that you can meet anyone anywhere and you can just arrange a time and you can both be there swifting from your own place. I heard though that you're flying out tomorrow, Emma. Oh, I hope it's not tomorrow. I haven't even packed. No, Wednesday. I'm thinking about flying out because uh, Brisbane's a nightmare. I want to go home to Adelaide where it's like sunny. Adelaide is home. Yeah, South Australia. When are you next flying? That's probably actually something I haven't discussed with anyone, is that I'm not going to do St George. <gasps> Sarah! I just want to get fitter, Emma. I know we talked a lot at Collins Cup about where I'm at and then all the things I've had going on. What is your main goal for this year? Secondary to uh, staying married. I think probably these PTO big championships. I think that and the 70.3 St George. Weren't you winning like some Zwift races or something? Oh, the Zwift Pro Races. I get so nervous for them. I think it's so intense. I use Zwift mostly for maybe intense training efforts, for like the shorter ones, and like some strength work, and a little bit of recovery. So maybe like two, three times a week, I'd say. I think we should only race 5K.
So let's do it short and sweet. Yeah, let's do that. As soon as we hit 13K. We ready? You know, with triathlon in particular, everyone takes it all so seriously and I can see the funny side of, of things. Yeah, I still, when it's about racing or when it's about training properly and everything else, I've got serious intent about it. When Sarah came back, I noticed that uh, she definitely still had uh, what us Aussies call, uh, she had some mongrel left in her. Mungle is like a term that we use to describe someone's fight and someone's desire and, uh, and really their attitude towards uh, really getting after something. <sighs> Personally and racing wise, the last two years have been pretty intense. Obviously I had like quite a lot of success leading into 2019 and my race in Hawaii. Um, I guess I had some personal things go on. I like got separated from my partner and um, yeah, it was pretty tough with the commencement of COVID restrictions and, and everything else. It kind of tore things down a little bit and I ended up getting a stress fracture and, and all these other things because you know, you're not sure how to cope or deal with it. With like no racing and everything else, you kind of get a little bit more drawn into it. In the end, I traveled for the most part. I wasn't at home in Australia. I found that being on the road in environments which I was used to, it was helpful for it. It was character building really. Like, you know, you turn up and you're vulnerable and you have to suck it up. I guess I went overseas to avoid dealing with the divorce and the separation and everything. You know, like that's a challenging thing in its own right. And different people I found deal with that stuff differently. Um, for me, it was like this, it was kind of mold in my mind, like it was a thing that was always there. And you know, you lose stability, you lose um, an understanding of your future and having a future where you know what you're doing is contributing to it, it actually became quite a big factor. So um, yeah. From a racing perspective on that, it's you're turning up to a race quite, races where you've once been a hard nut to crack you're quite vulnerable because you're not at the level of where you want to be or where you should be and you you're not with your coach and you're not with your home environment and things that you're used to and you're trying to sort of keep your head above water and it was just it's kind of chasing my tail because everyone had had these great years off, a lot of people had come out blasting at the start of the year and then I've gone and raced like some super competitive fields of people that were like real excited and ready to race and I just wasn't there yet and the entire year felt that way, super reactive. I realised um, it was time to come home um, just because things were clearing up and I just wanted to get my life settled, I wanted to be with my coach. Um, the borders were opening, it was becoming easier to get back home to Australia. I hadn't seen my dad for two years, so that was amazing. Even for mum, it's still 18 months, so it was pretty amazing to have the chance to go back to Adelaide for a few days. And then recently, I actually raced down there, and it was like a family thing. Everyone came and watched, and in the past, I'd kind of just been this brick wall Sarah and not really wanted anyone there and involved, but it's been great, like, sharing it with my family for once. I didn't really appreciate that too much in the first few years of racing, but I think uh, as you get older, you kind of like to see your family. They mean a lot. They support everything I do. As a child, I just love to be active. Always playing football with the boys down the road. I was very competitive. 
it doesn't stop when she finishes doing sport. Um, we competing for everything, brushing our teeth, uh, walking the dogs, like our whole life is a competition. I never wanted to finish something if I wasn't in the lead. I kind of felt that if I didn't win, then I, I'd failed at something and I'd go away and I'd work harder at it. On Monday was the day I didn't have any sports after school. So I used to just put my runners on and just time trial, I want to say like 3K to a bridge. I'd have to tap the bridge and then sprint home. Every week I would get so nervous for it and it was just literally me and my stopwatch. It's just that inside push. I just felt so free and fierce out there that I was achieving something and getting something done just by trying to push to the next limit and see if I could get my body stronger each time. And of course I learned early on that it didn't always work like that and yeah, I have to accept that in my head what a loss was, what a failure was. I wouldn't say I was a bad loser but I definitely didn't enjoy it and it just made me want to go away and work harder next time. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself. I have got the tendency to maybe overwork and push a little bit too hard. On my first cone, I had so much belief around me. And then for me not to finish, I was just angry that, yeah, I couldn't explain it. I fainted and I felt like my body had, had let me down and maybe there was something I could have done like in hindsight to prevent it or something. And I think Jared's really helped change that mindset of like he didn't care. What drives her is the fact that she wants to be better than herself every day. And sometimes that plays to her strengths but it can also be a weakness. Jared did a lot of training with me, invested so much of his time and for it really not to, like I could see it in his face, like it didn't face him, like he wasn't bothered. He was like, let's just go out and have a good evening and then we push on to the next one. If the people around me that are so loving and caring don't mind, then I can't kind of be angry and punish myself. Yeah, I have to let it go. Just being able to walk away from a race, take a deep breath and be like, I'm giving it my all and I'm doing it for the right reasons but not having that dread of how you're going to feel afterwards if it doesn't pay off. I'm very comfortable and familiar with the people that I know. Everyone else, I think it takes a bit of time to break down walls and just <laughs> maybe I don't come across as the most friendly person to people when I first meet them. Always have your tight bubble. Then, yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of battering you take from people that don't know you that well. If someone believes in me and someone's put time into me, I kind of really feel that I owe it to them to push hard every day. Kelly Holmes was a mentor when I was at a young age when, yeah, I was like, I'm just a junior. I'm, you're an Olympic gold medalist and you're talking to me who's just a wannabe. That time that she gave me really drove me, not just in my, career but also knowing that actually if you do some great things, if you work hard, if you try and be a role model then there's great stuff you can do. Without sport I think as a person with an addictive personality my life, my path could have gone such a different way. Just being around the right people really influenced my life and I think it can do for so many people out there. 100 to go. Causing floods in Johannesburg. Oh. Come on, Sarah. Enjoying the pain. Isn't there a word for that? Well, thanks for the hit out. That was amazing. Nice. Good to see ya. <laughs> nice for the meet up. Nice for a chat. On the first morning that Sarah rocked up to the pool, uh, for me, it was like she'd never left. I saw in that first 50 metres that, uh, yeah, she, she showed me that she was not here to uh, have a holiday. She, she still has mongrel in her.
time is of the essence. I've been racing for a long time now, but I'm the same athlete I've always been. I'm still here. I'm still training and racing. I wouldn't underestimate that.